People say our next speaker is the sole cause for global warming. <laughs> and that his stomach runs embedded Linux. Some people also still refer to him as a superhero, but all I know, his name is Daryl Herzman. Daryl runs the Iowa Environmental Mesonet at <laughs> Iowa State. <laughs> Should have known. Um, and he's here to talk about, I think, either eating ribs or the illusion of storm-based warnings. Daryl? Well, thank you. So since um, I'm not really going to talk too much about tornadoes, but since I didn't have a ranting section, oh, what's my next joke, Willard? Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Remember. So let's have fun this morning, right? So I got the next 30 minutes of your time. Let's not waste it. So who remembers what this guy did? When the president was talking, what did he do? Yeah. So if you see something you don't like, yell, right? OK? <laughs> I mean, if you can do it to the president, sure, you guys can do it to me, right? <laughs> All right. So if you look at my talk, you'll say, man, that's really a loaded talk, the illusion of storm-based warnings. Am I going to rant about the weather service for the next half hour? Well, the answer is yes, but <laughs> so the reason is, is why am I so bitter, OK? And number two is really the big one for me. What year is it this year? 2011. And what are we using for de dissemination for weather service? ASCII text. We can't even issue commas yet. Commas are coming. Lowercase letters are coming. <laughs> this is just amazing. And number three, there are too many warnings issued. How many warnings are issued in the country every year? Thunderstorm and tornado warnings. Does anybody know? Tens of thousands. How many tens of thousands? 80,000, good, good guess, you must have saw my slides. And of course, the last one here is I got married in July, so that's a good reason to be better too, I guess. <laughs> so, first of all, let's show a little slide you've probably never seen before. This is based on some data I've been working through and some internal sources of water search that have sent me. These are the total number of warnings issued, severe and tornado warnings, and we're looking at county warnings here, back to 1986. And you see two interesting little spikes. So here's NEXTRAD, 1996-97, and then here are storm-based warnings. Am I lying here? Anybody want to dispute this? What's happening? Are we getting more severe weather? Are we detecting more severe weather? Yes? Okay. So the axis is here, this red one is the number of warnings, county-based. So we're at 60 to 70,000 per year. This other axis is expressed in total area in units of CONUS, okay? So what does this mean? It means that last year we issued enough warnings to cover the CONUS 19 times over based on counties. And before I say, oh, this can't be right, how many warnings were issued for Story County last year? Does anybody know? <laughs> okay, that's why you're all here listening to me, I guess. The answer is 45. So if you you average it out over the entire country, you'll end up with numbers like this. But so you say, oh, we're not issuing county warnings anymore. So back in October 2007, we changed. And we were issuing storm-based warnings now. And from the glorious page, there's this sentence. Storm-based warnings show the specific meteorological or hydrological area and are not restricted to political boundaries. Is this true? Anybody raise their hand that thinks this is true? So I don't have to talk anymore, right? <laughs> so what, I mean, what's going on here? You guys are all saying, you're all agreeing that this is not true? Has anybody talked to their local weather source about it before? Oh, oh we got a dead audience. I need more jokes. <laughs> all right, Caffeine. so let's, try, let's look at this. So on this fancy web page, you see this illustration. And it says, before, we would light up all these counties for the warning. And now what we're doing is we're issuing these polygons. And who all issued polygons yesterday? and had fun doing it. Did your polygons look like this? Were they fan-shaped, illustrating the th threat, you know, uncertainty with the, with the path going out in time? How many people issued warnings like this yesterday? Do you see warnings issued like this routinely from the weather service? Oh. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so it's interesting. So let's, let's keep this in mind as we go through. So let's do a little thought process here of what we're going to issue. So we have this nice garden variety tornado that's bearing down in Des Moines. 
So we think we better issue a warning on this. So we remember our training and we look at this fancy plot and say, okay, we're going to draw an area that highlights the threat for this warning. So we draw out our polygon. Are we done at this point? Is this what we disseminate? Why? Why aren't we disseminating this? We have a text product to worry about. And what's in that text product? Counties. We have to worry about counties. Oh, so we look at the counties. Oh, we're going to light up five counties with this warning. Right? Who doubts this? This is what happens. We, we're going to light up five counties. And some of these counties, you know, their sheriff is their county judge, is their uh, chief of the sirens. And if any part of any warning touches their county, it's going to get, the sirens are going to go off the whole county. I live up here, whoopsie. I live up here on Highway 20 in scenic Boone County, and I get so grouchy when there's a warning issued, because I'll call up the weather bureau and say, I'm sleeping, I don't want to be my weather radio going off. <laughs> so what, the, what happens? Thankfully, WarnGen has this nice clipping feature, and the, and the polygon gets clipped off. So now we're only going to have two counties appearing in the warning. Anybody disagree with this? What am I showing? Is this what happens? For those of you weather bureau that have travel budgets, is this what happens? <laughs> now, listen, I'm not here to criticize the rank and file weather bureau. What am I showing here is basically policy failures and software failures. And I'm a nerd and I write software, so I'm criticizing myself here more than anything. So what happened here? How can we end up with this when this is what's illustrated for our threat? What happened? I'll explain a little bit, don't worry about it. So, so I've been looking at this warning stuff for a long time, and I just threw up some kind examples here. This is Los Angeles. What's happening here? Yeah, the issue, the, the polygon has to look like this, so they have to cover the island off the coast. Anybody knows why it has to look like this? There is a little policy that says, thou shall not issue tornado warnings over marine zones. So when you issue these warnings next to the coast, they get very funky. Here's one from Oklahoma. Beloved Norman. Oh, that doesn't look like a storm-based warning, does it? And then we got our monsters from Bismarck, which are larger than the state of Maryland. So, <laughs> so we, we mentioned the text product. Ye old text product. Can you in the back read this? You think the public can read it? Does the public read these? Does the public read hurricane local statements? Does the public read winter storm warnings, WSWs? No. Come on, people. We're all in the same boat here, right? We got to get rid of this nasty product. So look at this thing. What we want to get at, what is the warning for? Or where is it for? We advance. There's three different points in this product where we start illustrating geographies. The UGC, whoopsie, the UGC codes. Willard, come on, buddy. <laughs> the UGC codes are up here. Anybody know how to translate these in their head? What these translate to? What is IAC007? What is it, though? What's, what's number seven? Yeah, very good. All right, so we have the UGC codes up here. What is weather radio based off of? But they're getting them from here, right? In our text, we have four partial counties and one full one. What part of Polk County are we in right now? Nobody knows? Anybody? Guess? Are we in southwest Polk County? Why are we in southwest Polk County? We know. Where can you go and find this out? Yeah, if I go 100 meters north of here, I'll say you're in southwest Polk County. It's all relative, right? But yet, at the bottom, we have our official warning, which is this Lat lawn codes, right? Do you think the public gets this? All right, very good. Y'all going a cookie. So here's another question, if, you, if there are still doubters out there. How do you cancel a portion of a warning in the SVS when you're updating the SVSs? How do you drop part of the warning? You have to drop a county, right? The only way you can get this cancel text to come up is if a county gets dropped. Again. We got this VTEC code here. It's married to the UGC code. Okay. Thankfully, we have the TV weather, folks, right? 
Now, what do the TV weather folks do? They take these confusing weather service products and they deliver them to the people. Before this talk, I went to Barron's, I don't know if Jeff's in here right now, but I went to Barron's website and to Weather Central's website to look at their crawl systems. And what examples do they have on their website for their crawl systems? County-based warnings. For the TV folks in here, what do you show on your crawls? Do you show the counties or do you show the polygons? Why? That's not what the warning's for. We already discussed this. Plus, you can. Does the public understand the, the polygons? Yes. <laughs> so thank we'll be, all right, so we have TV weather. Okay, so forget about TV weather now. Let's talk about social media, right? Social media is going to fix it all. So those of you that know that I wrote a bunch of junk that goes on to social media and pollutes it, including a bot that goes on to Twitter. And what am I doing there? I'm relaying the counties, you know, bad Daryl, right? <laughs> if you go on, to, there's a couple companies now that have come out that relay to Twitter and to Facebook. What are they relaying? The counties. All right, so those of you who follow my Facebook picture, you saw this. What's wrong with this picture? I won't even explain it. So this is Fort Worth. As those of you who know, I love to pick on Texas. So <laughs> all I did here is I just plotted up all of Fort Worth's polygons since 1st of October 2007, tornado and thunderstorm, all together. What do you see? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Counties are showing up. Why? Aren't we issuing storm-based warnings? Do all the storms in Texas follow county borders? Does anybody think this is not a problem? Does anybody think anything? <laughs> all right. Huh? Ralph, I haven't insulted enough people. I might as well insult everyone. So let's do, look at some more stuff. So we take all the polygons and we count the vertices, right? So I took these 200 some thousand and manually counted all the vertices out. And you get about 50% of the warnings have four vertices. What does this mean? So you saw those nice fan shapes that were on the example. At the baseline, only 50% of those look like that or have a possibility to look like that. And we go up on to 20 and I think the most number I counted was like 44. But again, this is not, I'm not blaming forecasters here. What happened? We're in these complex marine zones and they're trying to make sure that the polygon doesn't dare go over water because we can't do that, right? The fish might get angry or something. <laughs> so we're going to show a bunch of slides now where I have all these fancy, ooh, red is bad and green is good. And you'll say, oh, look at my WFO. Oh, look at Des Moines yellow and Davenport's red, boo, Davenport, right? Don't worry about that, OK? <laughs> The point of these slides is not to point out the bad offices. The, po the point of these slides is to point out, look at the spatial variability that's going on with these statistics. Why do we have these spatial variabilities showing up? So in this first example, what I'm basically showing is it's the average severe thunderstorm size. So if you just did a simple average of all their polygons, what do you see? You see something, just in general, the smallest ones are sort of over the southeast, the largest ones are over the northern plains, west, OK? Anybody happy with, unhappy with this? Want to say I'm lying? Oh. So let's just do a simple thought experiment with this. So what I'm plotting here is the, that average size that I showed in that map against the average county size within the WFO. And you get some stranglers out here where you have very large counties. But in general, there's sort of a linear relationship here, right? So as a WFO has larger counties, their storm-based warnings are larger in general. Okay. And waving there. So if we take those two, that previous slide, and look at the ratio of the average polygon size versus the ratio or versus the size of the average county that they have in their WFO, you get some interesting picture here. Now we've got some spatial regularity. So it's kind of what's interesting here. So what, what's the take-home story of this slide, perhaps? MCSs. No. All right, let's move on. So what's the average county size by WFO? So this is basically a slide I should have put before the other one. And you see beloved Oak, uh, Alabama down here, right? All right, we'll move on. So we better get some more quantitative aspects here. So I talked a little bit yesterday for those of you who saw about the 15-kilometer buffered LSRs, local storm reports. 
So let's look at the area verification of those if you buffered out those LSRs. So basically it looks at you know, how much of the polygon basically got a, a report. If you just use 15 kilometers, I just pulled that out of the air for more, more or less. I also compute looking at this example. So we got these two counties that were lit up and we have a polygon that was issued that looks like this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, I failed geometry, but <laughs> so that thing there. The purple represents the amount of the, poly, the storm based warning that coincides with the county, right? So in this case, what you see here is basically all that purple area is where that storm based warning is, is basically the county border. And then we can look at size reduction because the, one of the gist of the storm based warning program was to reduce the amount of area that's getting warned. And so as, uh, an obvious question is, is that what's happening? So we look at the, so this is basically the WFO's um, average perimeter ratio expressed as a percentage. So a 50% value would mean 50% of the polygon's border was actually a county border. Does that make sense? So you see Fort Worth show up again, nice, right? It, in fact, they do have the highest number in the country, which is about 54% or 55.6, I guess. But you see some other things going on. So in the eastern US, you have a much higher ratio than in the west. Why is that? What's going on in the west? Much larger counties, right? So you're much less chance that these polygons are going to butt up against counties. Very good. Somebody finally called me on a lie. Yes. I'm not, yes, CWA borders are included in this. So it does, it would bump up everybody's numbers slightly. And as you saw yesterday when you guys were issuing what was happening in Northeast Iowa, when y'all were hitting uh, the border between Des Moines and Arkansas, or in La Crosse. Yes, so that does inflate these a little bit. And I'm, I will uh, subtract that out soon and come up with a better number for that. But then if you look at how many of these warnings were just pure retracements of counties. So 100%, I basically did 90 and above percent. So 90 and above percent of the polygons border is the actual county border. And it turns out that the nationwide average is only 2%. So that's good, right? Only 2% only of the warnings are basically a full county. And you get some really small counties, you know, on uh, peach trees, just got just hundreds and hundreds and real well, not hundreds, but you know, lots of little counties. But then you see some numbers like Detroit, I think they're at about 11% or so, and, and Fort Worth again shows up nicely. But the, again, the question is not to pick on offices, but why is there a spatial variability showing up in this chart at all? I mean, you'd expect to see maybe something that's more east-west. And then just to throw in the verification numbers. So this is the amount, the, the ratio of area that's getting verified in the warnings. And in the west, it's anywhere from 0 to 8% in these WFOs. So, I mean, but again, we're not going to pick on them with issuing bad warnings, but it's, I mean, it's hard to get, you know, verification in these very uh, sparse areas. But. And then finally, we're going to show the uh, size reduction. So this is how much, how much smaller, as in as a percentage, are the, are the warnings. And you see in the West, these numbers are the highest. So the storm-based warnings, you know, for the West are really a, well, I'm getting hissed back. Are, are, are really a blessing for them out there because they really want to issue for more specific areas. But then you look other places and you're getting some larger numbers in the east again. Oh, you say, but what, who cares about if you got really complex geometries, the perimeter ratio might fail. So what about a warning like this? So this is just hypothetical. We have this county and we have a warning issue like this. The perimeter ratio for this would show up very small. But is this still a warning that's guided by political geometries or political boundaries? Yes. Okay. Hypothetical, right? So let's compute another metric. And by this, we're going to look at the vertices, how many of the vertices are showing up next to a county border. The nationwide average is 75%. What do you think about that? You know what your, the percentage was for you guys yesterday when you issued your warnings? 25%. So it's, and you get into some, and John Hobbs is here, right? You get some strange statistics here about what actually would be a sort of a nat, nor, uh, natural, normal sort of, or a random distribution of points and you'd have coincident. But anyway, you get the overall nation average of 75%, which means that for a four-sided polygon, three of the vertices are actually at county borders. 
Yeah, and you see some, again, you see some strange things going on. You know, Fort Worth sticks out again, but there's not a, there seems to be some spatial signal to this, but it's not really that strong. There's some local office things going on here. So what's broken about this? I've, if I haven't ranted enough already, um, the warnings are, I guess my take home point is, is that the warnings are constrained by political boundaries at this point in time. And it's not a fault of the forecasters, it's really a fault of you know, everybody at GS14 and above, right? So <laughs> the office can't issue, and another thing is that the office cannot issue outside their CWA, and we ran into this yesterday. You cannot draw your polygons over the border. Um, VTEC, those na nice VTEC codes, are still bound to the UGC codes. They are not bound to the polygon warning, which is just a, a humongous problem yet for the warnings. And again, this issue of you can't issue them over the marine zones, and you get strange answers to why that is. Does anybody know why that is? Yeah, they have their own marine product, yes. But why can't you just issue a severe thunderstorm warning over a marine zone? Yeah, nobody knows. So, and in verification, there is no penalty for size, and they're, and they're still working this out. And again, it's just down the line. Warning issuing software has problems. The dissemination software, and again, that's me. So I do some of that stuff. The display software, again, that's me. So I'm in this boat, too. Another amazing thing is that there are local office policies out there yet that still conflict with NWS directives. So you'll see these things coming out where you have different offices doing some different things for the storm-based warnings. And it's really frustrating to me. And then finally, which is even more amazing, there is not a spatial topology check that goes on to that polygon before it's disseminated. There are warnings that go out that have invalid polygons. <laughs> I mean, and what is the private sector supposed to do about that, right? Oh, it's their problem, right? Well, I don't, that just amazes me. So summary, if you haven't been bored enough yet, about 50% of the warnings are four-sided, 2% are pure county retracements, so that's good. 75% of the vertices are actual county borders. Um, Storm-based warnings have cut the size of warnings by 50%. Now that slide I showed right at the beginning where I, we saw the increase in size, that was for the counties. I wasn't showing the actual reduction. So the size is reduced, but it seems like the number of warnings has increased. Now 2008 was sort of an anomalous year for this, so it'll take some more time to see if the number of warnings, plus we've had a change in the hail criteria, which will make some difference here too. And, the, and anybody want to argue this final point? <laughs> Who's, who thinks I'm lying? I, I've got 100 and some years of precedent for this. Anyway, so if I'm going to get up here and rant for all this time, I should offer some solutions, right? Yes. Who thinks I can't offer a solution here? Can't or can? All right, good. One honest person. <laughs> so here's the solution. <laughs> Come on. These both people uh, graduated from Yale, right? Oh, that was our former president. Anyway, so let's talk about more equally unrealistic solutions. And I'll rant about this in the next slide, but warnings need to be data. And there's, I know I'm a tech nerd, so I deal with this all the time, but there's a difference between data and a product. And I'll try to illustrate that in a little bit. And unfortunately, people, computers are our new overlords, so we need to serve them first, right? So we need to be doing stuff that the computer can f understand 100% of the time completely. And then we'll finally be able to have, you know, get the, hopefully the people to understand. UGC codes should not be included. This is never going to happen, so don't worry about this coming true. Warnings should come from the NW. This is an opinion of mine, really. And you could probably argue with this. But I really think that warnings should come from the Weather Service and not WFOs. Why does it care? What does it matter that the warning for this county comes from Des Moines Weather Office? Anybody want to argue that one? I mean, why? Why can't you just say from the Weather Service? Yeah? What about LSR transmission? That's the whole problem. The, the WFO's center ID, so DMX, is tied into all these dissemination technologies. So it has to show up in the products, right? We can't just issue a warning. We have to have it come from a center for it to get disseminated properly. It also means why La Crosse can't issue a warning for Des Moines, for Polk County, right? Because I bet most of the siren systems in here are set off of DMX. So if it came from ARX, they'd never see it. Although I think one office issued a 21 for the whole country and it went through a lot of places. But <laughs> um, Polygons should be limited to four to six, size, six sided sides or vertices, and I think that might actually happen some point. And then another rant on the Cubs. 
And of course, you know, Alfonso Soriano. Oh. <laughs> or I guess I, after the slide, I guess they cut people making $10 million a year too, so that doesn't help either. So let's, I got time yet, present to our organizer. So let's talk about the difference between products and data. So what, what happens now is where people are smart and they have a triangle in their head, right? This, the question is, is how do they disseminate that triangle to the public? And who remembers who this guy is? What's his name? No, this, no, that's Alf. Alf is here, who's this guy? <laughs> Willie, Willie Tanner, right? Yeah, so Willie Tanner's sitting here and he's hoping to see a square come from the Weather Service. So what happens right now? The Weather Service looks at Willie Tanner and says, well, we need to fit our triangle into a square and send that off to the world, right? So the, Mr. Computer here, which is me, more or less, sits here and says, I just want the triangle because I need to be able to do stuff with the triangle. And instead what ends up happening is he has to try to remove that triangle from the square. And, it, and that's where all the problems happen. That's why we have so many product failures and dissemination problems. So in my beautiful, perfect world where nobody can question anything, we have, you know, the War Service guys is focused on generating that triangle and disseminating the triangle, right? We disseminate data. And then Mr. Computer sits here and says, well, I know what Willie wants and I know what Meathead wants and so I'm going to send them what they want, right? You guys remember Meathead, right? Some, I know some, there's some kids in here, so. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks, Daryl.